Cool TV proudly presents Raceland Rams Baseball as the Cool Hit Sports Network brings you coverage of the Rams live from Raceland, Kentucky. Now let's head to the field for the pregame show. Raceland Rams Baseball live on Cool TV. And a pleasant good evening from a beautiful sun-drenched field here at Race Worthington High School. Welcome in to the pregame show as we start 63rd District seeding play as the Race of Rams and the Lewis County Lions square things off here for the first time this, season, this evening. Good evening, everyone. James Carter, happy to have you along with us here as the Race of Rams come in with a record at 16-2. They suffered only their second loss of the season as they fell to Rowan County over the weekend, 6-5 in extra innings. They bounce back with a 10-6 win over Scott, Kentucky, and a solid win. For Lewis County, they come in at 6-5. and five. They haven't played a game since last Tuesday. Now that was uh, against Pendleton County. They fell in that one 6-1 to one in six innings. Uh, a lot of issues with weather last week taking away a lot of their games. And I was talking with Coach Holder just a little bit ago, and he said that's certainly something that's you know, kind of have to shake a little bit of rust off here tonight because of the long layoff that they've had due to the weather. So beautiful sun-drenched field and playing surface here. And speaking of the playing surface, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to unveil the process that was this turf project here. I've got a, a, a time-lapse project that spanned across the, the winter months. It's just a little bit under five minutes, but it takes you from dirt to turf and all the stuff in between. That's as we continue here in the pregame show on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com when you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Where does your money go? When you bank with us, your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan. A real estate agent sells a house. They get a commission. They deposit it with us. We use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers. Hometown people helping each other grow. That's what it's all about. First in People's Bank and Trust Company, member FDIC, we are the home office. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg.
from dirt to turf. That's what it looked like over about a three month period of time. From the time they peeled all of the grass off of the playing surface here and then brought in all the excavators, ripped up the mound. That was the piece that everybody wanted to see. And then the, uh, the process throughout the winter months, uh, a phenomenal job and this place is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, you won't find a better place anywhere in the area than what you're gonna find here at Race and Worthington Schools. Now with the baseball field, softball field uh, being turfed, mixing in with the football field that was also turfed last year. So all turf playing surfaces here for the three major sports and uh, it is absolutely beautiful. No rain outs here. Uh, we, we know that all too well. We, we got absolutely monsooned last week uh, and we played all the way through, never stopped. Even with uh, wet equipment, we were probably two seconds from an electrical shortage, but uh, we battled through it. That's what we do here at Cool TV. We, uh, we take it to the next degree of stupidity. Uh, yes, but uh, hey, we had some duct tape involved, I'm sure somewhere, it's probably why we got through it. Let's talk a little uh, baseball here this evening. First of district games for both of these two teams as again, the way the district seating plays out is after you get back from the, the spring break trip there the 1st of April, you play one week and then that next week, that second full week of April, that starts your six district seating games. So Raceland and Lewis County will entertain each other tonight and tomorrow night we'll be with you up in Vanceburg tomorrow evening. Meanwhile, Russell and Greenup play this evening and tomorrow. Then next week, we'll flip with Greenup. Greenup will be here on Monday. Racing will go to Greenup on Tuesday. Russell will be with Lewis County next week. And then that last week of April, first part of May, it'll be Raceland and Russell, Greenup and Lewis. And again, all the games here at Raceland and at Lewis, you can catch right here on Cool TV. But uh, again, those six district seating games, that's what sets the, the seats for the upcoming district tournament. And in the, the 63rd district is the host this year for the 16th region tournament. Site to be determined, as there is a little bit of uh, some conversations that still have to be had between who actually is hosting that tournament. Because there's two schools that think that they have the rights to hosting. And nobody knows which one is which. So we will, uh, we will find out, but we certainly know that it is in the 63rd district this year is where the uh, the 16th region will be hosted. So somewhere between Lewis County, Raceland, Greenup, and Russell, it'll be in one of those places, which is good for us because it's nice close to home. But Raceland has uh, kind of had Lewis County's number over the last several years as you got to go all the way back to 2019. That was the last time Lewis County got a win over Raceland. They got uh, a 6-2 win and a 9-5 win and the district seating games back in 2019. But Raceland took the most important game and that was the district championship. They beat Lewis County eight to one in that game. Since then, the Rams have won 13 to two in six innings in 21, seven to one in the uh, latter part of May 21. They beat them 11 to one in five innings in 2021 in the, re in the district tournament. Seven to one in 2022, followed by a 12-1 win in six innings. And then again in the district tournament, nine four opening round. In the last two games, Rams winning it by a combined score of 19 to one last year in May 2nd and May 3rd. Sammy Holders grew a little bit older this year, and that's something that he and I have talked about at length throughout basketball season and everything, of just what his team has to, the, to bring to the table. Uh, one of those big players that he brings in this year was not with him last year due to an ACL injury, and that's Casey Roberts, and more importantly, senior. Uh, he's gonna get the ball tonight and, and work from the bump. Uh, Raceland's going to go with Briar Parsons. Uh, kind of a bullpen night, if you will, not because they're throwing off, but uh, the Rams are also looking at a potential matchup later on this week, which would be the all-A sectional. Pikeville and the other, I believe it's Shelby Valley in the 15th region, have to play their game tomorrow night. Raceland still has to play Pikeville or Shelby Valley.
One, they beat up on Fairview in the All-A 18-2. Uh, they cro cro cruise through the All-A with West Carter and Fairview, no problems there. Uh, a good one with East Carter, they won 7-3 in that one. They beat Huntington 5-1, uh, knocked off Fairland and Colgrove, Wayne and Buffalo all before leaving for the beach. So meeting at the home plate area with our home, home plate umpire tonight, Dave Anderson. I do not know the gentleman that is with him, but uh, Coach Holder and Coach Mills there. I remember coaching for Raceland, and Coach Holder was playing. Uh, he's Again, he's the youngest coach in the uh, 16th region, but uh, he has certainly paid his dues and done a phenomenal job up in Vanceburg. And I remember watching that cat play. I mean, he was uh, – Heck of a left-handed stick. He threw from the right-handed side, went on to Kentucky Wesleyan, and had a story career down there pitching. Um, one of the best pitchers that rolled through this area in a long time uh, when his, his days were up. Had a really good fastball, a good breaking ball, and he could throw it in any pitch at any point in the, in the sequence. Uh, that was what made him def devastating. But uh, he's uh, he's got a couple of guys tonight looking at Cason Roberts, interested to see what he's going to look like and again coming back after the ACL from last year. And then we're going to look at Briar Parsons. Uh, the first time uh, that I've been able to see him this year as he'll take the bump for the Rams. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll start first with the visiting Lions. Leading things off and playing left field is Connor Plank. Batting second and catching is Colton Tackett. Batting third and playing third base is Kyron Ferguson. The cleanup hitter is the shortstop, Xavier Prater. Batting seventh in pitching is Kaysen Roberts. Batting eighth in center field is Braxton Egbert. Batting Seventh, as a designated hitter, is Cam Ferris, batting eighth and playing first base, Brody Tatillion. And batting ninth and playing second base is Hunter Bivens. Again, Plank, Tackett, Ferguson, Prater, Roberts, Egbert, Ferris, Tatillion, Bivens. That's a starting nine for Coach Holder's Lewis County Lions. Ferris will be hitting for Helpenstein, the right fielder for this evening's ball game. I, I texted Coach this morning when we were trading lineups and I said, Helpenstein, I said, did you transfer a kid in from Germany? He said, nope, homegrown. <laughs> I kind of laughed. I said, that doesn't, nothing says Helpenstein like Vanceburg. And, and, you know, that just doesn't go together. But uh, either way, young kid uh, getting his uh, varsity stripes here this season. Let's take a look at Marty Mills' starting lineup. As leading things off and playing center field is Parker Fanon, batting second at first base is Caden Shore. Batting third and catching is Eli Lind. The cleanup hitter is the right fielder, Braden Webb. Batting sixth, excuse me, batting fifth and playing left field is Zane Bailey. Batting sixth at shortstop is Parker Eisen. Batting seventh as a designated hitter is Connor Thacker. Batting eighth and playing third base, Landon Blossom. Batting ninth and playing second base is Michael Pennington. Again, for the Rams, Fannin, Shore, Lynn, Webb, Bailey, Ison, Thacker, Blossom, and Bennington. And pitching for the Rams will be the junior of Briar Parsons. Rams will be in the orange tops of the white bottoms today. Lewis County in the Texas Ranger look. They've got the uh, gray tops and bottoms of Lewis across the chest. I'm hoping that we get to see the new home unis tomorrow night. I'm not going to spill the beans because I have got a chance to see them. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, they're pretty phenomenal. Now, I'm, I'm a little partial to the colors simply because of, of what they are, but uh, Coach Holder's right there with me. And I know if, uh, if my good buddy Jack Likens is watching in, he's, he knows exactly where we're talking about as well. But uh, this one should be a, a good one here. And then again tomorrow night we'll be up in Vanceburg. 5.45, we'll, uh, we'll start the stream. 5.50 pregame show, and then we'll first pitch at around 6 p.m. Playing right field, brand number five, Braden Webb. Playing left field, brand number 16, Zane. Bailey. Beautiful sunfield skies and a little breezy this evening. We've been dealing with wind here late recently, of course. And uh, the wind tonight is coming in. Uh, that's uh, that's one thing to point out is it is blowing back in the face of the hitters out of that left field corner. You give one a ride tonight, you got on a good one. Because you're going to have to give it a hard punch to get it out of here. All right, we'll take a break. We come back. We'll meet our starting lineup to get you ready for first pitch. Lewis County and race on after this on Cool TV. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition-free. 
good at Ashland Community and Technical College. This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Fall hunting season is here. Border Sporting Goods has your best selection of Hoyt and Matthews bows as well as 10-point crossbows with a full selection of accessories for all your hunting needs. Borders also offers a full selection of shotguns and rifles with plenty of ammunition and reloading supplies along with a wide selection of benchmark and case knives. Borders is your headquarters for the largest selection of Liberty gun safes in the area no matter how big or small you need to keep your firearms safe. Before your next hunting excursion, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Empire this evening. Now batting blank. So leading things off for Lewis County is the left fielder Connor Plank. Plank batting 296 on the season. Eight hits, two driven in, eight walks on the year. Right hander high on the bump, kicks and deals. That one misses downstairs for a ball, and this ball game is underway. 608, first pitch. Beautiful sun filled skies, a little cloud cover over top hanging around, doing no problems though, but 82 degrees. A bit breezy, winds blowing out of the west. 8 to 10. 1 0, called a strike. 1 1. Check our Cloyd Sports trivia question coming up in the second inning. It's Jackie Robinson Day, so of course we're going to have a little Jackie Robinson trivia. 1-1, one, one, hot chopper over toward first base and a foul ball. Short scoops that one up. Count moves to 1-2. and two. I was digging through all the different trivia today. It's one of the things I love doing is the trivia side of things. and 
of course, it being Jackie Robinson Day, if, you know, everybody gets to wear 42 in Major League Baseball today. That's a really cool thing. It's one of the things I've still in, in, my, in my career, it's a bucket list. I want to cover a Major League Baseball game on, on Jackie Robinson Day. But uh, I had to do a trivia question for Jackie Robinson. I think I got a pretty good one today. It's a pretty easy with two. Here's the one, two. This one's a one hopper right out toward the shortstop. Pennington scoops and throws one down. Now batting, Tackett. So it brings in the catcher of Colton Tackett. Tackett batting 318 on this season. Seven hits, nine driven in with a double. He's walked seven times. Fouls this one away. We'll check scores around Major League Baseball throughout the evening as well. Just misses. Patriots Day today up in Boston. Guardians rough up the Red Sox 6 0. Day of the Boston Marathon as well. No other games underway yet. A few getting underway here in the latter part of the 6 o'clock hour. 1 1 misses high. 2 and 1. Chopped foul over on the third base side. Count even to two and two. Good look there, Tackett on that right-handed side. Eli Lynn checking into the dugout, getting the pitch sequence. Chris Hughes, the pitching coach for the Rams. Parsons back to work, the 2-2. Swing and a miss, nice pitch on the breaking ball, two down. That brings in the third baseman of Kyron Ferguson. Ferguson hitting it well this year, 455. Ten hits, five driven in. He has the lone home run this season for the Lions. Now batting Ferguson. Also tied for team high and walks with ten. That one gets away from the catcher as it goes to the backstop, 1-0. Just high, two and low. Here's some interesting things about history today with Major League Baseball. It was on this date back in 1968. We had the longest played game that ended in a shutout in the history of Major League Baseball. It's a rope foul on the third base side. Back at the Houston Astrodome, the Mets and the Astros play a 24-inning game that ended in a 1-0 win when the – Shortstop for the Astros, or the uh, Mets, Al Weiss, let one go right between his legs, and the Astros went up 1 0. 2 1, lifted skyward in the infield. Bloss fighting off the sun. Makes the grab, and the Lions go in order in the first. We head to the bottom of the first. Scoreless with the Rams coming to bat after this on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring and Greenup 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook 
and Twitter. Jason Roberts takes the bump for the Lewis County Lions. This will be his sixth appearance on the season, a record of 2-2, two and two, a 2.45 ERA. He's worked 20 innings, 14 hits, 31 strikeouts, 22 walks, 19 runs. Only seven of those have been earned, though. Live arm from the right side. Seen a really strong fastball, good breaking ball. Gotta really pound the zone when he works against this Rams lineup. And you can't give them free passes because you put base runners on and that's when they jump all over you. He's got three good ones. He'll have to go right after out of the gate and Fannin Shore and Lind. Check our Coy Sports Trivia question. Top of the next inning on this date, Major League Baseball. April 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and became the first African-American player since 1884 that had played in the bigs, first ever to play in the Major Leagues. He got the call up from the Montreal team that was there with uh, the Dodgers, the Brooklyn Dodgers at the time. And uh, the rest, as we say it, is history. So Parker Phantom will lead things off. Senior batting 367. 18 hits, 13 driven in. Three doubles, a triple. Leads the team with 33 stolen bases out of 34 attempts. Needless to say, he gets on. He's going to do some hard things on the base paths. Looks at a pitch up and in for a ball, 1-0. And crowding that inner half of the plate. That one's just up and a little bit off, 2-0. and oh. Great look in there from the center field view. 2-0, -oh. chopped at the plate, foul, 2-1. and one. Our crew tonight, executive producers Travis Otworth, our camera operator field levels Felicia Collier. Happy to have everyone along with us here tonight. We'll be with you tomorrow night up in Vanceburg. 5.50 pregame, 6 o'clock first pitch in game number two of this series. If it's the first time with us here on Cool TV, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you see something you like. Hit that bell will alert you each time we put out new material. Here's a ball off the end of the bat right at the first baseman to Tillian. He'll scoop and step on the bag, one away in the inning. Then comes the first baseman of Caden Shore. Sure. One of the several lefties that the Rams offers in the lineup. Short raking pretty well this year. 385 hitter, 15 hits, 14 driven in, four doubles, a triple. Leads the team with 19 walks. Very, very good eye at the box. He will not swing at anything out of the zone, and he fouls this one away on the first base side. I think we got two good. Pitcher's on the bump tonight, and it's it's not one that you're going to see get away from you, I don't think. A couple of defensive plays or a, a bobble one way or the other could change the outcome of this game and the way things are looking so far. Breaking ball sneaks in there for a cold strike. Shores behind nothing in two. Defensively for the Lions, it's Plank Egbert and Helperstein. Ferguson, Prater, Bivens, Detillion. Tack it behind the dish, and Roberts on the bump. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him on the breaking ball. Two down in the inning. Now Gotta bring in the catcher, Eli Lind. Number 14, Eli Lind. Lind batting 370 on the year. Second in the team and hits with 20. 18 driven in, four doubles, a triple, and one home run. Got his home run down at the beach. Looks at a slider that's in there for a cold strike. Brandon Webb would be in up next if Lynn can find himself a way to get on base. The close stance there in the right-handed box. Roberts back to work the 0-1. This one's up in the air, drifting down the right field line and bending foul. Helping Stein giving a look. 
The Tillion was tracking down that way too, but it just kept bending with the wind, blowing that direction as well. So Lynn behind nothing and two, bases empty. Here to start the home first. Roberts looks in for the sign from his catcher. Has the one he likes. The right-hander in his motion, the 0-2. Slider in there, cold strike three. And a clean inning for both teams. Roberts needs 10 pitches to get through the first. We're scoreless as we head to the second after this on Cool TV. <laughs> Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size, with a wide selection of tackle for Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Border Sporty Goods, US 60 West, and Ashland. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. Top of the second inning, scoreless. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Koi Sports Trivia question for tonight. It was on this date, 1947. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and became the first African-American player to play in the bigs. In his first major league at bat for the Brooklyn Dodgers, what did he do? Did he A, walk, B, grounded out, C, single, or D, did he strike out? There's the number to text the answer to, 606-571-7281. We'll take a look at the answer in the top of the fifth inning. And we'll check the, throw that back up on the screen a couple times throughout here as well. Xavier Prayer, the shortstop, will lead things off. He leads the team in average at 464. He looks at a first pitch at the knees for a call strike. Thirteen hits, sixteen driven in, six doubles. Has a triple on the season as well. One of three for the Lions. That one's low. Count evens at one and one. Both pitchers clean first innings. Parsons needed thirteen. Roberts needed only ten pitches to retire the side, including two back-to-back -back strikeouts. Here's the one-one from Parsons. Took a little bit off of that one, and he swings through and misses one and two. Game's getting ready to get underway. Twins are at the Orioles, Rangers, Tigers, Rockies, Phillies, Giants, and Marlins, and then the Angels and the Rays, all those in the latter part here of the 6 o'clock hour. Here's the 1 2 from Parsons. Tried to sneak it on the top half of the zone, but just misses high 2 and 2. 7 o'clock game tonight. Yankees are in Toronto. The Pirates are at the Mets. Royals at the White Sox. Padres at the Brewers. It's a 2-2 from Parsons. Hot chopper over toward Bloss. Pumps and throws. Nice play, Landon Bloss. One away. Kind of got it stuck in his glove, and then he took his time and pulled it out of there and made a strong throw across the diamond. Take a look at it on your Grayson Sporty Goods instant replay here. One of those tweeners did a good job of getting and make a strong throw. Nice stretch there by Shore as well. So it brings in the pitcher now, Cason Roberts. Roberts batting 2-11 on the season. Four hits, 16, or six driven in. First pitch misses high for a ball. Roberts sec, or tied for first in the team with 10 walks on the year. And also leads the team in stolen bases with five. Here's the 1-0. Allen gets past the catcher into the backstop. It's 2-0 as we go pitcher on pitcher. Nine o'clock games tonight. Actually, we have one game in the eight o'clock hour. Astros will entertain the Atlanta Braves tonight at 940. Cubs and D-backs, Cardinals Athletics. Reds are out in Seattle. And then at 10 o'clock tonight, the Washington Nationals go to Dodger Stadium against the LA Dodgers. Swing and a miss on the 2-0 pitch, two and one. One final today, the Guardians beat the Red Sox 6-0 to mess up Patriots Day today up in Boston. 
date of the Boston Marathon. 2-1 misses low, 3-1. Roberts trying to find the first base run of the ball game. Here to start things off in the visiting second. 3-1 for Parsons. This one's a sh hot shop out to the shortstop. Ison picks and throws, no problem. Two down. Now batting, Egbert. So brings in Braxton Egbert, the center fielder. Egbert batting 333. Eight hits, seven driven in, four walks on the year, no extra base hits. A 1 0. In there for a called strike, evens things at 1 1. Sam, with the two pitchers we've got going right now, if they keep doing what they're doing, filling up the zone, let the defense work behind them, we're going to have a dandy here this evening. We'll reconvene tomorrow night up in Vanceburg. There's a ball that gets through the left side in our first hit of the ball game into left field. And a two-out single for Egbert. Game two of the series tomorrow night. Now batting, Ferris. So it brings in Cam Ferris, the designated hitter. Harris batting 20, Ferris, excuse me, batting 208 on the season. Seven hits, set, five hits, seven driven in. I need to slow down a little bit. One double. I'm trying to speak too quick. Great look there from your side cameras. We got cameras all over this field. He lifts this one the end of the gap, but there's Parker Fannin drifting over, makes the catch. Easy out. Lions get a runner aboard, but they leave him. We're scoreless as we go to the bottom of inning number two after this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb drives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. Bottom of the second inning, scoreless. Good pitcher's duel going on so far. Another look at that trivia question. This date, Major League Baseball history, 1947. Jackie Robinson made his debut with the Brooklyn Dodgers. His first Major League at bat, what did he do? A walk, B ground out, C single, D strike out. Text me 606-571-7281. We'll check the correct answer in the top of the fifth inning. Again, Jackie Robinson Day. Take a guess. A, B, C, or D. I'll make it easy on you. I'll give you four options. You see, I don't even give you options. I just look for the answer. Text me 606 571 7281. We'll check that answer there Braden in the top Webb. of inning number five. Braden Webb leaves things off, batting 451 on the year. Leads the team in hits, RBIs, doubles, triples, and home runs. Needless to say, he's doing a little bit of everything. Looks at a breaking ball that's downstairs for a ball one and zero. Oh. Five doubles, two triples, four home runs. Hit two of those in the six-five loss to Rowan County on Saturday over in Moorhead. That one's upstairs. Count goes to two and zero. Oh. Lions get the first hit of the ball game with a two-out single. Both teams win in order in their 
respective first inning. Roberts back to work the 2-0. Tries to sneak that one in at the belt, misses, it's 3-0. Tack it awaits the 3 0. Right down Broadway, cold strike, 3 and 1. Nice pitch there at the knees. Still got to work a way to get K zone in. I mean, even if we got to just draw a box, I think. Unless somebody out there has got a cool million they'd like to come off of, so we could, uh, we'd let you sponsor it. I mean, it would be totally sponsored. <laughs> nice pitch. Bottom of the zone there. I text, I, I kid my good buddy Dave Anderson, who's behind the plate, and I said, we'll put a K zone on you one night. Who wins this battle, Roberts or Webb? The payoff pitch to the right fielder. Misses low ball four. So the leadoff walk issue to Webb. First base runner aboard tonight for the Rams. And that'll bring in the left fielder of St. Bailey. Now batting number 16, Zane Bailey. Bailey batting 383 on the year. 18 hits, 12 driven him, three doubles, nine walks. Webb, third in the team and stolen bases, 12 out of 14 on the year. And he just bonked, sure did. As soon as Webb took a big jump over there, he immediately pointed toward Roberts and said he just bonked, and he sure did. He flinched when Webb took that big hop. So now the Rams with a runner in scoring position with nobody out. And let's see if they go small ball here and try to move that runner over to third with Bailey at the plate. Shows bunt, puts this one foul on the backstop. That one won. I don't know their signs, but Coach Mills and I, we've been around for quite a while. <laughs> kind of know his philosophies. We coach together. We were both assistants on the staff here under Coach Vanderhoof back in the mid-2010s. I've been around Marty for quite a while covering this team as well. I know how he thinks. A one, bunts this one up, and a diving catch there by the pitcher. What a play there by Kaysen Roberts. A diving catch on the bunt up in the air, one down in the inning. Now batting number two, Parker Ison. So in comes the shortstop for the Rams of Parker Ison, batting 304 on the year, 14 hits, 13 driven in, one double, nine walks on the year. I got Detillion still up on the infield turf on the first base side looking for the bunt. Healthy lead for Webb back at second base as he continues to walk away from the bag. First pitch grabs the outside corner for a cold strike. It's 0-1. Prater working behind Webb out at second base. You can see him into your screen there. In the turf, nice boxed up job there by Tackett. Count goes to one of one. Again, as a, as a catcher, if you've never played on the turf surface, it's a little bit of a different bounce that you get when you play on dirt. Uh, you know, sometimes dirt, it'll kick one way or the other. The turf, you get that little spongy spring up a little bit, so you really got to play it off the chest. It's going to come up. It's not going to stay down and get flat on you. Here's Ice and Shell's bunt pulls it back. It misses high. It's two and one. Webb on board with a walk and then was balked to second base. Bailey tried to bunt him over to third, but put it up in the air, and Roberts made a diving grab coming off the mound. Roberts 2-1. That one gets past the catcher and through his mitt, and that'll bring Webb to third base, and the count goes to 3-1 on the pass ball. First run of the ball game, 90 feet away. And the Rams dent the scoreboard here early on with the leadoff walk from Webb. 
A bonk and a pass ball. Infield stays back for the moment. Three balls and one strike to Eisen. Chases one upstairs. It's three and two. Roberts from the belt and the stretch. The payoff pitch. Misses high, ball four, and they're at the corners. So Ison with good speed over at first. 14 out of 16 on stolen base attempts this season. And in comes Connor Thacker. Thacker, the designated hitter for tonight's game, batting 400. 16 hits, 14 driven, and one double. He's left the yard three times this year. He fouls this one away, over top of our shoulder and over top of the fence back. Hey, there's the truck that got hit by the softball the other night. We need to start pay, charging that guy. It's $10 to watch from up there. It's only five if you come inside the fence. He'll one. Backer tries to bunt it down the third base side. It's a foul ball. It's nothing in two. Backer didn't look too sure of himself there when he bunted that one down. Not well, if the runners weren't doing what he expected them to do or what it was, but either way, he did not look like he was on the same page with what the other ones were doing. Roberts needs a strike here in the worst way or a runner going. Foul tipped into the mid. Thacker is out on the swinging strike. There's two down. Nice job there by Tackett to hang on. Credit the stolen base to Ison. And now it's up to Landon Bloss. Now batting number 20, Landon Bloss. Bloss a freshman. Batting 194 on the season. Six hits, eight driven in. 15 walks on the year. He's got a chance to put his team in front here early on. He looks at a called strike. Nothing in one. Boy, if Roberts could wiggle out of this one, that would be huge. Pennington in the on-deck circle would go next. Two in scoring position for the Rams, but two down. Leo one. Chopper back to the mound. Strong throw there by Roberts and a nice stretch by Detillion gets Bloss at the back. And the Lions end the inning. Rams strand two, we're scoreless through two. Back after this on Cool TV. JSB Industrial Solutions Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with the vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro Kentucky. Rev up your autumn adventure and refuel at Clark's Pump and Shop. Make a pit stop and treat yourself to our assortment of snacks and drinks. Clark's Pump and Shop has the perfect treats to satisfy your fall cravings. From our seasonal lattes and iced coffees to specialty donuts and desserts. Don't just fuel up your vehicle, fuel your taste buds at Clark's Pump and Shop, your ultimate road companion. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Top of the third inning we go. Both teams put runners aboard, but neither can get them across. Raisel missed a big opportunity there. And runners at the corners with one out. Roberts gets a strike out of Thacker and then induces a ground ball back to himself from Bloss and wiggles out of the jam to keep the game scoreless. Eight nine in the top due up this inning for the Lions. The Tillian Bivens and back to the order at the top of the order of this is Cameron Plink. A Brody Tillian will lead things off, a 240 hitter. Six hits, three driven in with four walks. From the left side, he'll swing it. As Parson starts off the third inning. He misses high with a ball. Ball 
This one's fouled away. Tillion, one of five sophomores on this year's team for the Lion. Three seniors, four juniors, five sophomores, and four freshmen. One one, called strike. One ball and two strikes. Here's the one two. Called strike three, expanded on the outside corner and picks up the strikeout for the first down of the inning. His second strikeout of the ball game. And in comes the second baseman of Hunter Bivens. Now batting, Bivens. Bivens hitless in 11 at bats this year. He nubs this one right back to Parsons. He'll field and throw two down. So back to the top of the order we go. Now Connor Bain. Plank, who's over one. Plank grounded out to Pennington over at second base. One hit thus far, and that's the two-out single by the Lions in the second. Both runners aboard for the Rams were on board due to walks. Parsons evens the count at one and one. Swing and a miss. One and two. Dramatic music plays. I'm surprised I haven't heard the finish of them yet, though. Parsons high on the hump. A 1 2 to the leadoff hitter. Fouled away. They call that guy up there, tell him to come down and get those two foul balls, and we'll let him stay. And the gentleman that's parked up here on, six, on 23 took a home run off the hood of his truck Friday night in the softball game over here when the Rams played Sims Valley. 1-2, hot chopper back to Parsons. Parsons settles and makes a strong throw and throws it over top of the first baseman's head. Webb was there on the backup, but the error on the pitcher puts a runner aboard and the inning continues. Now batting. So Parsons That's just it. Rushed it, and an airmail shore over at first. So in comes the catcher of Colton Tackett. He struck out swinging his first time through. Parsons <laughs> from the belt. Misses high for a ball. Cue ball straight back onto the net. Kind of even at one ball and one strike. Plank taking a very awkward lead at first base as he gets away from the back. He stands very close and then takes a giant hop. Around as Parsons comes set. Just cross his legs right there. Throw over, high throw. Runner going. Here's a throw down to second base. There's nobody there. Plank will take second base. Lynn's throw was 
plenty in time, but there was nobody there. Pitch was a ball. So now runner in scoring position for the Lions with two down, count at two and one. Can tack it clutch up and give his team an early lead. Parsons misses high, it's three and one. And not the two dudes you want coming to the plate with base runners on, standing on the X circle. And Ferguson and Prater. Lions would love an opportunity with a couple guys aboard for those two cats to come up. Here's a three one attack it. Downstairs, nice block there by Lynn, but there's two on. And that brings Kyron Ferguson in. Ferguson hit a towering drive to Bloss to end the first and before we get a chance for Ferguson to take a hack. Chris Hughes wants to come out and have a word with his pitcher. Again, it's the first time with us here on Cool TV. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you see what you like. Hit that bell each time we put out new material. We'll, uh, we'll alert you there on your mobile device. We'll be with you tomorrow night up in Vanceburg as this series reconvenes for game number two. 5.50 pregame show, 6 o'clock first pitch. Right here on Cool TV. Your exclusive home for East and West Carter, Raceland and Lewis County Athletics, as well as KCU. I was gonna say just for a second there, I thought everybody had frozen in motion, but it was our signal just froze. <laughs> I was like, man, they are standing very, very still. <laughs> Listen, RF is a beautiful thing when it works. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you do, it can not work the way it wants to. So big opportunity here for the Lions. Kyra Ferguson digs in. Turn and throw in behind the runner, easily back in his plank. Upstairs and away, ball. One and zero. Both teams now with two runners aboard. Rams had both of their runners in scoring position in the home half of the second. Could not get them across. Nice pitch at the belt. Evens things at one and one. One one, out to left field. Coming on is Bailey. He makes the catch, and ends the inning. Lions threaten into third, but they leave two aboard. We're scoreless as we head to the bottom of inning number three after this on Cool TV. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 Second Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person, or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osman Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osman Pharmacy and Grill today. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs, whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event. a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. We go to the bottom of the third. We're scoreless. Nine in the top to up this inning for the Rams. That's Michael Pennington. And then back to the top of the order, Fannin and Shore. Both teams with runners aboard, but neither have been able to push any across. As both pitchers have been able to wiggle out of the jam. Raceland had two on in scoring position in the bottom of the second. Lewis kind of got two on at first and second, but and had the right guy at the plate. Ferguson hit, hit a well hit ball, but right at St. Bailey out of Left field to end the inning. Now 
batting, number three, Michael Pennington. So Michael Pennington will start things off batting 186. Gets away from the catcher into the backstop, 1-0. Pennington, eight hits, nine driven in, one triple. He's also earned 10 walks on the year. Shows bunt, puts a nice one down, and Ferguson overruns it. It's going to be a tough play, but Ferguson just totally overran it. So an infield single. Now batting number 10, Parker Fannin. And that brings in Parker Fannin, who's 0 for 1. Fannin hit a flare right at the first baseman to Tillion. To open up the home first. The Rams were first hit of the ball game. Runner goes, Fannin fans at it, and ball goes all the way to the backstop. They move the runner up to second base on the wild pitch. Pennington probably could have made a hard turn toward third had he looked in, and he didn't do so. So now runner in scored position, but nobody out. And the Rams in the top half of their order. Can they do something with it here? Fannin lays off, count evens at one and one. Dettillion playing up on the cutout on the infield turf. So a bunt single by Pennington. He moves up to second on the, inf on the uh, wild pitch. This one's fouled away. There's the glass breakage. I was wondering when it was coming. A little, little uh, late there. Must have really hung up. Beautiful night here in Ramland. Nice breeze. Plentiful sunshine. The one, two. Works down and away, two and two. Sure to go next. Roberts takes a look back at second from the belt. This one's drilled straight away center field. Egbert on his horse, and that one's over his head. That one takes a hop up against the wall. Fannin's making his turn. He's coming to third. He's going to come in easily as he'll beat the throw and a head first slide. It's an RBI triple for Parker Fannin. That's Fannin's second triple of the season. The Rams grab an early 1-0 lead. That ball was absolutely smoked. Egbert caught a taxi to center field. Now batting, number 23. By the time he got there, he needed an Uber to get it back into the infield. Deepest part of the ballpark as it took two hops and went up against the fence. So now Caden Shore steps in. Rams first baseman. Chance to add to the lead here with nobody out. Shows bunt, a little safety squeeze the Rams were showing there as Phantom was dancing down that line over third base as Ferguson was crashing. So Rams dent the scoreboard first on the RBI triple from Parker Fannin. Now Shore. That's the second run of the ball game, 90 feet away. Shows Bunt, pushes this one down, it's a dandy. Ferguson will look and go to first base. The sacrifice is complete, it's two nothing Riesland. Smart play there by Ferguson. Had a look at it, but he said, I'll take the easy out for sure, rather than taking a chance and not getting the runner. And I like it, like the in the situation of the part of the game you're in right there, I think it's a smart play. So the base is empty now for Eli Lind. Lind struck out looking to end the first. He 
He chops this one out to the shortstop. Prater picks, settles, and fires a bullet across. Two down. Now batting number five, Braden Webb. So brings it Braden Webb. Webb walked his last time through. balls and no strikes. He struggled with Webb his first time through. Webb worked a 3-0 count, battled back as Roberts did to a full count, and then walked him. And then Webb got stranded at third. 3-0. Just like the first time. What was the song? Second verse, same as the first. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. Three zero. 3-0. High ball four and a four pitch walk to Braden Webb. So Webb aboard for the second time in the ball game. Number 16. As Zane Roberts issues his third Bailey. free pass of the contest. And it brings in Zane Bailey. Bailey popped out to Roberts on a bunt attempt back in that second inning. Nice pitch at the knees for a cold strike. Saw Webb there take that kind of hop jump lead over at first base. He got Roberts to balk back in that second inning when he got aboard. Now time requested. Webb kind of looks a little bit like Jackie Robinson over there at first base dancing around from the bag. This one's fouled away as he chases one up out of the zone. It's nothing and two. Got over to the football field. Two runs across here in the inning. First ball came on an RBI triple from Parker Fannin. And then sacrifice bunt from Caden Shore. Pushed the second run of the contest in. Runner going, ball chopped back up the middle. Prater takes it on the hop, flops it across to Detillion, and that ends the inning. But the Rams push two runners across on two hits. They leave a runner. Three in the books, two nothing Rams. We're back after this on Cool TV. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around where does your money go when you bank with us your deposit becomes your neighbor's loan a real estate agent sells a house they get a commission they deposit it with us we use it to make an auto loan to one of our customers hometown people helping each other grow that's what it's all about first in people's bank and trust company member FDIC we are the home office So Xavier Prater will leave things off. He grounded out 
to sh third base. On a really nice play by Landon now Bloss, his first time through. Prater slimmed down during basketball season. I was talking with Coach Holder. He was talking about how much basketball season has really done him good. Nice play there by the second baseman, Michael Pennington, as he settles out into the shallow center field grass for the catch and the out. You know, Prater was kind of a bigger kid, played a lot of first base, third base, and then he got in basketball season and really got himself toned and in shape and everything. And now he's got him out there, calls him Ellie Deli Cruz. That's the way he looks. There's Case and Roberts. Misses low for a ball. Roberts grounded out to short his first time through. That's high, 2-0. Oh. Both pitchers have done a good job of pounding the zone. Roberts, 63% of his pitches, 29 for strikes out of 46. Parsons, 58% for strikes, 28 of 48. That one's low, and it's 3-0. Somebody is wearing a very strong vanilla fragrance. This wind blowing in here is just pounding our noses up top. So a four-pitch wonk issue to Roberts. So the Lions pitcher is aboard. I'll see if the old adage lives true of the leadoff wonk about 72% of the time comes around to result in a run. So Braxton Egbert steps in. He grounded a ball through the left side for the first hit of the ball game. Good speed with Roberts over at first base. Lewis County on the season, 19 of 20 from stolen bases. Parsons makes a throw over with Roberts' massive three-inch lead. I think if Roberts had his eyes closed, he could still get back before the throw. It's one thing I will say in Major League Baseball that I love the, the fact of the throwover rule. This was in the turf. Nice job there by Lind. You throw over twice, that's your limit. If you throw over again, you either have to pick them off or it's a bulk. And you can't just get pitchers that sit there and throw over and throw over and throw over. That's one thing of the game I, I do like the speed up rule with that is the ability to not just sit there and just grind at a game of wasting time. It's, you know, it was one of the things, too, that you could do it. If you were trying to get a pitcher quickly ready down the bullpen, you needed to spend some time, that you could do it that way and and just throw over after throw over, and there's nobody that's going to tell you to stop. And you could milk out a game doing that. Here's the 1-1. Runner going, balls in the gap. That one may find its way down, and it will. All the way out in the gap. Bailey cuts it off. Roberts will come first to third. Moving up on the throw is Braxton Egbert with a double. So Bailey cut it off. Ferris. Egbert was already heading for second base on the throw in, so now Cam Ferris steps in with two in scoring position. Lines down 2 nothing, but a great opportunity here for Cam Ferris to try to put a run across the board for the Lions. Corners pinch in, middle stays back. You got to think that ball that Mr. Egbert just hit was hit dead into a headwind, too. On a normal day here, that ball's probably all the way to the fence. Parson sets from the belt, the 0 1, and steps off. Speaking of wind, I got a lesson about the wind up in Vanceburg a few years ago. We were doing a game. I had uh, Jack Likens was, was on color with me, and there was a ball that was hit. Nice play there by the shortstop. They'll get the runner, runner across. Two to one, our score goes to. Either way, there was a ball hit that looked like it was going foul. And it was across the fence on the third base side. And I said, that ball's going to drift out for a foul ball. And I noticed the third baseman kept looking and looking. And he goes, are you sure about that, James? And about that time, all of a sudden, I see that ball bend back in. That ball probably moved 40 feet. And, I mean, it was gale force winds that night. It was a chopper to the first base side and a foul ball. 
And I've always said it doesn't matter now if they hit that thing on the football field. I'll wait until it hits the ground or somebody has touched it before I rule it a foul ball. Tying run 90 feet away. Brody to tell you no for one. That one gets away from Parsons on the way to the plate. Tillian struck out looking. Parsons with two strikeouts. Roberts has three. The nine hole Bivens will go next. Nice pitch on the outer half of the plate, one and two. Sun starting to set down US 23 off that left foul corner. We start to see a little bit of the shade start to creep on the field and left field from the indoor hitting facility. One, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that ends the inning. Lewis County puts a run across on a hit. They leave a runner. We go to the bottom of the fourth, 2-1 Rams. We're back after this on Cool TV. Primary Plus is celebrating 40 years of its mission of quality, advanced, affordable health care. With over 11 primary care locations throughout the region, Primary Plus believes in our communities and our patients. The Primary Plus name means primary care plus so much more. Offering extended services such as women's health, pediatrics, dental, counseling, diabetes management, infusion services, and on-site pharmacy that offers free delivery. Primary Plus believes in connecting health care for you and your family and is always welcoming new patients. Learn more at primaryplus.net. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Go to Ashland Community and Technical College. This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Blinded by the light. Hey, how about a trivia question? This day, Major League Baseball history, 1947. Jackie Robinson makes his Major League debut, breaking the color barrier. It's Jackie Robinson Day, by the way. His first Major League at-bat for the Brooklyn Dodgers. What happened? Did he walk A, B, ground out, C, single, D, strike out? I have still yet to have an answer. Come on, people. There's numbers there on your screen. All you got to do is text it to me. We're going to check the answer at the top of the fifth inning, so... You're going to get bragging rights for the first official trivia question of the year. Again, Jackie Robinson's first major league at bat. How did he result in that one? Now batting. Six, seven, two. and eight do up this inning for the Rams. Eisen, Thacker, and Bloss. Two one ball game. Both teams with two hits. Rams with one run better on the scoreboard for the moment. Parker Eisen drew a walk his first time through. Nice pitch on the outside corner for a call strike 0 1. And shows bunt, pulls it back on the pitch low. One and one. Warriors lead the Twins 2 1. That game up in Baltimore. All other games, and Marlins just scored on the Giants in the second down in Miami. All other games that's underway right now, scoreless. Here's the one one. Nice pitch, top half of the zone, called strike two and one. One and two, excuse me. Nice pitch into the mid. Tackett juggles and hangs on for the strikeout. Number four in the ball game for Cason Roberts. One down in the fourth. That brings in Connor Thacker. He struck out swinging on a ball into the mid of Tackett as well. Well, we have our first response. Do me a favor, people, when you send me a message, make sure you put your name on there, too. <laughs> I have a response, but I don't know who you are. Now batting, number 15, 
Now, now we're starting to get some answers rolling in. Again, make sure you text me your name so when you, if you do get the correct answer, I can refer to you who you are. But uh, again, we'll check that answer in the top of the fifth inning. That one in the turf kicks a pass tacket. Again, the trivia question tonight. Back in this date of Major League Baseball history, 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier and became the first African-American player to play in the bigs. What happened in his first Major League at bat? That's the question. It's the 2-0 to Thacker. Check swing. It was a strike either way. It's 2-1. and one. Josh Reed has checked in, as has Cameron Meadows. So we got two people in. Come on, folks. We can do better than that. It's a multiple choice, for God's sake. You got a 25% chance of guessing. 2-1. <laughs> Breaking ball downstairs. Three balls and a strike. One down in the fourth. Good ball game here between a pitcher's duel between Roberts and Parsons. Here's a 3-1 to Thacker. Called strike. Full count. Roberts has done a really good job of watching, working the top half of that zone. Let's see if he comes back with a breaking ball here. He's like that pitch. Thacker awaits a payoff pitch. And he swings and he misses. Really good job there by Roberts to battle back on that one for his fifth strikeout of the ball game. There's two outs in the fourth. That brings in Landon Bloss. Bloss grounded back to Roberts at the mound. Two hits each way. Rams finding a way to push across one extra run thus far. They lead it 2-1. Boss shows bunt, pulls it back, a called strike. Freshman settles back in the right-handed side. Roberts back to his motion. That was high with a fastball, one ball, one strike. I would imagine we will see Xavier Prater tomorrow night for Lewis County. I do not know who Raceland would go with. They've got tons of options. One, one. Chopper to the third base side. Prater picks it. Running throw on a stretch by Natillion. Nice play to end the inning. Very nice play there by X. A little Ellie De La Cruz, we say. Rams go in order. We're through four. It's 2 1. We're back after this on Cool TV. I'm April Perry, the CEO of Kentucky Farmers Bank. On average, our employees have been with Kentucky Farmers Bank for over 10 years, and that is important to you and us. We want you to know who you are dealing with. Whether you are financing a new home, buying a car, or remodeling your kitchen, Kentucky Farmers Bank is the better bank for all your needs. Kentucky Farmers Bank, the better bank for all your financial needs since 1931. Located in Ashland, Summit, and Catlettsburg. KentuckyFarmersBank.com, member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're looking for a complete discount pharmacy with old-fashioned service and excellent prices, look no more. Since 1979, Stultz Pharmacy has provided our area with the finest in pharmacy care, 24-hour emergency prescription service, free delivery, and drive through service for prescriptions. Stultz Pharmacy continues to fill all of your expectations. They carry a nice selection of gift items. For hometown service, see the professionals at Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stultz Pharmacy. Last play there to end of the inning on the Grayson Sport of Goods instant replay. Prater deep in the hole there, a running, throwing a nice stretch there by the Detillion. Heck of a way to end the inning. Let's quickly take a look at the trivia question. You got one last chance to get in here. Cam Meadows and Josh Reed have, have put their answers in. Today, Jackie Robinson Day, back in 1947, he had his first major league at bat. What happened? Did he A walk, B ground out? C, single, or D, strikeout. Text me your name and your answer to 606-571-7281.
We'll check the answer with an out here in this inning. Again, there's my number, there's the answer options. And we'll now check the answer pivots. here in just a second. Hey, my producer just texted me. <laughs> he, can't, he can't text, he might know the answer. Hunter Bevan starts things off. We'll go nine in the top this inning for the Lions. And the first pitch way to the backstop, Ricky Vaughn style. Tried the corner and missed. Want to know. A couple things to throw around some trivia question today. Back on this date, 1993, Sparky Anderson got his 2,000th victory. As a manager of the Detroit Tigers, they rallied to beat the Oakland A's 3-2. Nice pitch there at the knees, one of one. Scotty Hatterberg hit his first Major League home run in Fenway Park, but it was negated doing an umpire call back on 1997. Here's the one one. Here's a chopper right back to Parsons on the high hop at the mound. He'll settle his feet and throw one down. Here was one that I remembered happening and didn't realize it was on this date. But this happened on April 15, 2001. There was a swarm of bees nesting in Coors Field out in Colorado in the right field auxiliary scoreboard, and they made their presence known when Todd Hollinsworth stepped in the batter's box and after a nine-minute delay, the game continued without incident of players, fans, or bees. But there were bees everywhere. He had a three-run home run following the incident, by the way. Colorado got the win 10-7 over Arizona. Connor Plank steps in. He's 0 for, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Let's go back to the top of the order. Here's a slow roller out to Pennington at second base. A couple of hops, two down. All right, let's check our trivia question for tonight. It was on this date, 1947, Jackie Robinson made his first major league at-bat appearance. Question is, what happened in that at-bat? Get it here in just a second. It's told Colton Tackett steps in. Nice pitch in there for a cold strike. Did he walk, ground out, single, or strike out? The correct answer, Mr. Producer? He's taking too long. We're going to miss a play. <laughs> this one's fouled away. Correct answer is B. He grounded out. And the correct answer goes to Mr. Cameron Meadows. He was the first one to correctly connect in there. A big shout out to Bailey Brownen, who's Brandon, who said he also grounded out. Sarah S., Caden Shore's favorite aunt, she said C. Josh Reed went with A. Single, but hey, thanks for everyone for texting. I'll have a new trivia question with you tomorrow night. Travis Otworth, my producer, believe it or not, he did miss the question, and he had the correct answer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One ball of two strikes. This is a little floater over toward right field, settling in as Webb makes the catch and a clean one, two, three inning in the fifth. Time to stretch here at the ballpark, ball, ballpark, excuse me, 2-1. Rams in front. We go to the bottom of the fifth after this on Cool TV. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporting Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size, with a wide selection of tackle from Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Border Sporting Goods, US 60 West, and Ashland. River Cities Builders is a licensed general contractor specializing in commercial and industrial projects, and they have a history and reputation of providing top-notch expertise through their experienced and devoted workforce. River Cities Builders also is a gas facility maintenance company offering petroleum equipment maintenance and EMV compliant upgrades for smart payment terminals, and they offer 24 hours, seven days a week emergency service. Call 606-473-4112 or visit River Cities buildersinc.com Bottom of the fifth inning, 
Rams in front of the Lions here in this first 63rd district seating game between the two. We'll reconvene tomorrow night up in Vanceburg, 550 pregame show, six o'clock first pitch. Catch all the action right here exclusively on Cool TV. Just talking to uh, Jackie Robinson today, it was back in 2009 when every player in Major League Baseball donned the number 42. And they've done it ever since. Um, they have every every player today is wearing 42. It is a scoring nightmare uh, when you're trying to keep up with everybody, what they're doing. Uh, but it is an honor and a massive tribute to one of the greatest to ever play the game. And everything that Jackie Robinson did for the game of baseball. So Michael Pennington, a bunt single to start things off here in the fifth. He looks at a first pitch strike. Roberts has been very efficient. 60 pitches, 63% of those strikes, 38 to be exact. Both pitchers fill the zone up. Roberts' biggest bugaboo's been Braden Webb. Here's a bunt down to Ferguson at third. He'll field and throw it across, one down. So go back to the top of the order, Parker Fannin. He smoked one to straightaway center field for an RBI triple. They gave the Rams the early Rams the one nothing lead. It was Fannin's second triple of the season. He's got Davey Anderson scooting away. Spikes the fastball, 1-0. Talking about Dave Anderson. He's done the, the uh, uh, not the triple crown. He's all the way around the horn. Is diving save there by Prater. Tries to throw it away. and He'll kick past the first baseman. Fannin will take off running to second base. So the throwing error on the infield single will move Fannin out to second base with one out. Now batting number 23. Heck of a play by Prater just to smother that one. He should have stuck that one in the back pocket and instead throws it away. So it brings it Caden Shore, but back to Dave Anderson. He's appeared in four state championships now in four different sports. Volleyball, baseball, football, and then he got his trip to the Sweet 16 this year. This one gets past the catcher to the backstop. That moves Fannin over on the wild pitch. And a very critical run, 90 feet away for the Rams. Shore 0 for 1, sacrificed home Fannin the last time through. He struck out swinging in the first. Fouls this one straight back. A little bit halfway between here and US 23. 101. Our truck has left. He can only watch three innings. That's all he pays for. Score shows bunt, pulls it back, and looks at a strike one and two. Fouls this one away. He did that because he's got his turn signal on. His back pocket's hanging up. You don't have that turn signal on, that ball stays fair there. It's a parachute as well. It makes you slow down. He don't need to slow down anymore. Shore's a good kid. I've got him in class. Funny kid. Really good ball player, too. One, two. He rockets this one to straightaway center field, dropping back Egbert. He makes the catch, tagging his Fannin, and Fannin comes in safely. It's a sacrifice fly. Three to one, Rams lead it. Hit it to the good part of the park, very deep. Well, the bases are empty, there's two down. 
Oh, there's 3-1. Now batting, your catcher, number 14, Eli. And Eli Lynn to the plate. Struck out in the first, grounded out to short his last time through. And a junior. This one's in the gap, and that one's all the way out to the left center field wall. Lynn's on his horse. He's motoring out for a double. Number five on the season for the junior. And a two-out big swing for the Rams catcher. Keeps things going here in the home fifth. Now batting, number five, Braden Webb. Got a courtesy runner out at second base. Stephen Pennington. So Zane Bailey comes to the plate. There's a throw down to third, and they got him. Nice throw by Colton Tackett on a ball in the turf and a recovery. Here's the look at it on your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. Made a great smother and then recovered and threw an absolute dart. Great look there on your camera side as well. 3-1 after five. We're back after this on Cool TV. J.D. Flooring 2017 Ashland Road Greenup has been family owned and operated for over 30 years featuring top of the line material, guaranteed installation, and absolutely no one can beat J.D. Flooring's price. Need to replace your current flooring in one room or the entire house? Call J.D. Flooring in Greenup 606-473-0411 for a free estimate. A call that can get your house ready for any occasion. You'll absolutely love your new flooring from J.D. Flooring. 2017 Ashland Road, Greenup. The Greenup County Public Library System is the best. Read the latest bestsellers in large print, regular print, or audio CDs. You can also check out movies or place a hold on a book on our website or call one of the library locations to place a hold. There are community meeting rooms available by reservation at all locations for clubs and organizations. And be sure to check out the Jesse Stewart Collection at the Greenup County Branch. Check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Top of the sixth inning. Now batting Ferguson. So three, four, and five do up this inning. Ferguson, Prater, and Roberts, the big sticks for the Lions. Fire Parsons out to start his sixth inning of work. 68 pitches through five innings so far. Misses inside. Lions with two hits, Raceland with four, both teams with an error. Rams with two runs in the third, one more in the fifth. Lions getting their run in the fourth. This is a rocket on the left field side, right at St. Bailey. He comes on the line, makes the grab, one down. Nice play by Bailey. Over and left. Now batting, Prater. Bailey's made a couple of nice plays over there tonight. So he's in Xavier Prater's 0 for 2. Ground out in a fly out. He's down and in. They're just trying to pitch him backward there with a the change up. Marlins extend their lead over the Giants, 3-0 down in the Miami. Phillies lead the Rockies, 1-0. This one's fouled away. All other games scoreless thus far. Rangers, Tigers. Angels and Rays. Yankees and Blue Chase. Pirates and Mets. Orioles, Twins still at 3-1. That game in the bottom of the third up in Baltimore. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
Lifts this one skyward. Coming on is Bailey. He's got a beat on it, makes the catch, two down. Now batting Roberts. And then comes the pitcher, Case and Roberts. Roberts a ground out and a walk. Nice pitch. Yeah, you know, the nice part when you get two teams like this that are they they field it well, they play it well, they pitch it well, it makes the game flow. That's what we've had here tonight. We've had a really good flow to this game. I'm not talking about the speed of how fast or slow it's moving. It's just it has a flow. And when you get a, a game like that, it, it allows everybody involved, broadcasters all the way to players, it just you get in a rhythm. Parsons back to work with the 0-2. Nice pitch out of the outside corner with a slider as he gets the swing and the miss. His fourth strike out of the ball game as the Lions go down in eight pitches. We head to the bottom Take of the sixth. Of Rams hope it's the last time they need the bats. They lead it 3-1. Yeah, We're back after this on Cool TV. Kentucky Christian University is a private, nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of eastern Kentucky in Grayson. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit to campus. JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. is owned and managed by Shane Wallingford to be a solutions provider for manufacturers tailoring to their specialized needs. It was created with a vision that good communication among all parties will provide the best answer to the problem. From ball mills used in pulverization to custom design of equipment or components, JSB Industrial Solutions, Inc. will gladly work with clients to resolve the issues that are prevalent. Their vision is to make your project their successful business. JSB Industrial Solutions, Tollsboro, Kentucky. Well, pitchers duel thus far. It's 3-1 Rams. Case and Roberts trying to keep it right here. In the visiting seventh, the Lions will have Egbert, Ferris, and Detillion. That's six, seven, and eight due up. Needing at least two. The Rams will bring Zane Bailey back to the plate as he was at the plate after Webb was walked. And then the courtesy runner for Lynn was cut down trying to swipe third base. So 3-1 our score. Beautiful evening here in Ramland. Happy to have everyone along with us here on Cool TV. Again, our crew this evening. Travis Otworth, our executive producer, our camera operator is Felicia Collier. Both of those doing a phenomenal job as always. We'll be back with you tomorrow night up in Vanceburg. 5.50 pregame show, 6 o'clock first pitch. Game number two of this series. Then next Monday and Tuesday, it'll be Greenup County and Raceland, Russell and Lewis. And then the following Monday and Tuesday, Raceland and Russell, Greenup and Lewis. Bailey. After the games tonight and tomorrow, we'll have the home games of each one of those series. So Zane Bailey back in the box, 0 for 2. That one was well to the backstop. That one was wild, wild thing, Vaughn. I heard somebody said just a bit outside. One of the greatest movies ever, Major League. Harry Doyle, a.k.a. Bob Euchre. He does it like nobody's business. 1-0 downstairs. He had a good one in Major League 2 when they hit a ball in the left field, and he says, unless that guy left fielder Shaquille O'Neal, that ball's out of here. Sun so starting to drift down. U.S. 23, there's a slider. It's in there for a called strike, two and one. Beautiful evening here, especially after all the weather we went through last week. It rained on us every single day, except for Saturday when we had our final softball game. A little cool that morning, but it turned out to be a really nice day. Here's a ball right back up the box. as that one undresses Roberts on the mound for a leadoff single. Fifth hit of the ball game for the Rams. And in comes Parker Ison. Parker Ison. Ison 0 for 1, walked and swung, struck out swinging. Yeah. 
Nice and showing bunt. That brings Ferguson forward, but Robert steps off. From the belt, Eisen shows bunt. Here's a throw down to second base. It's a good one, but getting in there safely is Bailey on the stolen base. Take a look at it again on your Grayson Sporting Goods instant replay. A really good throw there by Colton Tackett. Prater was a little behind the bag there. I think if he had been in front of the bag, he had a chance to make a play. That allowed Bailey to slide in there safely on the head first slide. So now runner in scoring position for the Rams with nobody out. And a big insurance run that could push the lead to three if they can push it across. Slings this one wide, 2-0. and oh. See the flags dancing away from the mast there over top of Campbell. Still pretty de decent breeze, and again, it depends on kind of what part of the ballpark you're in. You look at that, ca or that camera angle that you saw there with the flags over there, and then the flag out in left center field is almost hanging really still by the mast. This is a beautiful bunt up the line. That's not going to do anything with it. Ferguson. Made the throw behind him. Raceland just missed an opportunity, too, as Lewis County had everybody sucked in. There was nobody at second base. So the Rams execute the bunt to perfection for an infield single, their sixth hit of the ball game. And they're at the corners. And Connor Thacker is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. So at the corners with nobody out, Thacker with a chance to tack on a few more. Plays off the breaking ball upstairs, 1-0. If the weather stayed like this all year long, except for Christmas, I would like to have about six to eight inches of snow around Christmas, and after that, it needs to stay like this all year long. Nice pitch there, 1-1. Low to mid 70s, high, or high 70s, maybe low 80s. Just perfect. But that little breeze keeps that, keeps that humidity down. There goes Ison, and he bonked. He sure did. He flinched. That's his second bonk of the game. So that'll bring the runner home and make it 4 to 1. So Eisen just took off running, and when somebody yelled runner, that made re, made Roberts flinch, and in the process, his second ball of the ball game. Two and one. Thank you, good sir. Some fresh water from the concession stand by the good friends of our serve pro. Boyd Carter Green up in Lewis Counties. 2-1, nice pitch, 2-2. Two two. Two, two, swing and a miss, strike three. One down, Packers third strike out of the ball game. Robert's sixth. So the one down, Landon Bloss steps in, is over two. A pair of ground outs. Back to the pitcher and shortstop. Nice pitch at the knees for a cold strike. Nice drink of water right there, as Bobby Boucher would say. That's some high quality H2O. Here's the old one. Lost shows bunt, pulls it back on the slider. What a one. Twins and Orioles have added a run each in the fourth up in Baltimore. Oh, still lead that one four to two. Yankees jumping out to one nothing lead over the Blue Jays up in Toronto. Everybody else still scoreless. 
One one. Boss tries to bunt that one and sends it foul. Phillies lead the Rockies one nothing in the fourth up in Philly. Marlins Giants still three one down in Miami. Got to see the uh, the ballpark down in Miami when we drove past it. We were down for a cruise. It was really cool. We were going to go to the ball game. Decided to go parasailing instead. I think that was a good trade. There's a one two. Nice pitch, swing and a miss. Tackett will throw it down to first base for the strikeout. So two down in the inning. Eisen moves up on the play. Now batting. So the nine hole hitter of Michael Pennington steps in. A bunt single down the third baseline and he grounded out to Ferguson over at third base. Top of the order of Parker Fannin in the on-deck circle. 4-1 Rams, two down here in the sixth. That was low. Roberts at 89. Pitch is coming up here. Two balls and no strikes. Here's the 2-0. This is a flare, but right at the second baseman, Bivens hauls it in, and that ends the inning. But the Rams push across the run. They lead it 4-1 as we go to the seventh after this on Cool TV. At First National Bank, we strive to make every person that walks through our doors feel like family. Because to us, you are. For over 120 years, we have lived in and served the families of Kentucky with genuine care through the good times and the bad. Come and see the difference banking with family can truly make for you at any of our seven locations or visit our website at www.fnbgrayson.com. First National Bank, member FDIC. Not only is State Senator Robin Webb proud to support and congratulate our youth in all their endeavors in and out of the classroom, but your State Senator Robin Webb is also proud to support and work for all the adults in her district. Robin Webb strives to put forth the best for youth and adults alike. Whether it's in Frankfurt or here at home in her district, know that Robin Webb puts you first in all of her decisions she makes. State Senator Robin Webb drives harder every day to make Kentucky a better place to work, live, and have fun. Foo Fighters in the background there, blaring from the sound system here at Rachel Worthington High School in Ram Stadium. 4-1 as we go to the seventh. Briar Parsons trying to pitch a complete game. He's allowed only two hits. He'll go in against Egbert Ferris and Dettillion at 6-7 and 8. As the Rams try to pick up win number 17 on the season, but more importantly, go to 1-0 in district play. Greenup leading 8-3 to three in the top of the fourth over Russell. They'll reconvene tomorrow night for game number two. Egbert two for two. He's got both hits. Both of them the left field. And he gets a little slow roller back to Parsons. He bobbles it in the mound, settles and throws. Nice play, one down. Sometimes those types of plays can turn into disasters when the pitcher fields it and then kind of bobbles it and they get in a rush. A really good job there of just settling himself, picking the ball up, turning, looking, and throwing a nice strong throw over to shore at the bag. So Cam Ferris, who's 0 for 2, flew out to center and grounded out to short. And cue balls this one up the first base side, but it won't bend back fair. It'll stay foul in the first base coach's box. Stay tuned with us after the game for the post-game show. We'll do all the scoring wrap-up from this one. The smell of hot dogs is always prevalent here in Ace. They are so good, too. Here's the 0-1. That's a rocket out into center field coming on. Fannin making a diving grab, and he can't get there. Ferris will make the hard turn. He's going to motor in out at second base with a stand-up double. Heck of an effort there by Parker Fannin as he laid out trying to get there, but just came up empty. And Ferris gets in 
for the second double of the ball game for the Lions. So Ferris picks up his second double of the season. Only the third hit for the Lions. And we'll get a pinch hitter to the plate as Waylon Reeder will step in. Reeder batting 250 is one for four on the year. He looks at a first pitch called strike. Now batting, Reeder. Four one here in the seventh. Swing and a miss. We're trying to park that one over on the uh, playground equipment at the middle school. O oh, two, nice location. Won't get him to offer though. Really good spot though. Now throwing the slider. One ball, two strikes. One out here in the seventh, runner at second base with a one-out double from Ferris. Fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes. Now, Mr. Producer, one thing that we've not had any tonight, none of our cameras have been cutting out, so it had to be just once. Yeah, it had to be the, uh, the, the all of the rain that we picked up in the process. Here's the one, two. Chopper foul on the third base side. I can deal with one minor cutout, but I mean, it was like every three seconds the other night we were here. <laughs> we got, we were setting up, it rained. We get into the game, it's raining. We get uh, to the end of the game, it rains. And it was three little cells that came across Raceland and just dumped buckets of water on top of us. Nice breaking ball, sneaks that one in there for a cold strike three. Parsons picks up his fifth strike out of the ball game. There's two down in the seventh. And that brings in Hunter Bivens, who's 0 for 2. Two ground outs. Now batting, cold. Now check, they're going to get a pinch hitter for Bivens. As Aiden Cole will come to the plate. Cole, a 125 hitter, and he's behind a nothing and one. Cole, Cole, one for eight on the season. One on one. Runner at second base is Ferris with a one out double. Top of the zone, a called strike, and the Lions are down to their final strike of the ball game. Beautiful sunset down US 23, and Friar Parsons trying to turn out the lights of the Lions for a district win here at home. The one, two. There it is, called strike three. He picks up his sixth strike out of the ball game, and the Rams win this one by a final score of four to one. A complete game effort by both pitchers, but Briar Parsons got a little of offense to support behind him, and he pitches his team into the victory as they'll pick up win number 17 on the season, but more importantly, they got a 1-0 in district play. We'll take a break. We come back. We'll break everything down for you. Rams win at 4-1. We're back after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Osman Pharmacy and Grill, located at 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg, Kentucky, offers fast and friendly service with a hometown feel. Check out their specialty items in person or order them online at osmondpharmacy.com. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill also has daily dinner specials where you can dine in or get your order to go. Stop by or call Osmond Pharmacy and Grill today. Osmond Pharmacy and Grill, 89 2nd Street in downtown Vanceburg. One, your final in this one. Rams victor, victorious. Two runs across in the third. Lewis County got one back in the fourth. The Rams played one in the fifth and the sixth, but the two in the third would have been enough. 
as they win this one four to one. Parker Fannin has a big night at the plate. That RBI triple pushed in the first run of the ball game. He came around to score there in that inning as well. As Caden Shore, a couple of sacrifice bunts to push the Rams into the victory column again. 17 on the season to be exact, but 1-0 in 63rd district play. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll break everything down and wrap things up here tonight. Rams victorious 4-1 over the Lions. We're back after this on Cool TV. Hello, everyone. I am Rick Clark. Let me introduce you to Carlisle, Annabelle, and Zach. And as you can tell by these commercials, this family has a lot of fun. We have a great team here at Clark's. And we would love for you to join our family. Whether you're a young person looking for your first job, someone who's looking for extra work, or maybe you're ready to start a career at a growing company, we want to talk to you. To find out more and start the process, go to MyClarksPNS.com. Clark's Pub and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Spring fishing season is just around the corner, and Border Sporty Goods is your fishing headquarters for rods and reels from G. Loomis, St. Croix, Fenwick, Luz, Daiwa, Shimano, and Abu Garcia. No matter what species of fish you are targeting, Borders has the perfect setup to make your next trip on the water a success. Borders has baits in every style and size with a wide selection of tackle for Berkeley, Strike King, Zoom, Z-Man, Bandit, and many more. Before hitting the water for your next fishing trip, stop by and stock up at Borders Sporting Goods, US 60 West in Ashland. One final time here in the post game. Let's take a look at our numbers for Lewis County. Braxton Egbert goes two for three. Cam Ferris goes one for three with that double there in the seventh. He and Egbert each with doubles. That was the only three hits in the ball game. For the Rams, six hits, two of them coming from Parker Fannin. He had an RBI triple in that two-run third inning. He comes around and scores two of the four runs for the Rams. Caden Shore drives in, two runs, both of those on sacrifice bunts. He just uh, he goes 0 for 1 tonight. And then Eli Lynn with a double for his lone hit. Braden Webb walked all three times tonight, two on uh, pitches. The third time was intentional, but uh, they did not allow the big man to try to hurt them at all. Pennington with a bunt single in the bottom of the order. That was the first hit of the ball game back in the third inning of play. Here's your final pitching lines for Lewis County. Casey Roberts goes six innings, six hits, four runs, all earned, strikes out seven, walks four. He'll take the loss. Ryan Parsons works a complete game, seven innings, three hits, one run, it was earned, strikes out six, he walks two. He'll pick up the victory. Final box score looks like this for Lewis County. One run on three hits, one error. They leave five runners on base. Race on four runs, six hits, one error. They also left five runners on base. Took us an hour and 39 minutes to decide this one. But the Rams pick up the victory. They go to 17-2 on the season, 1-0 in district play. Lewis County evens up at 6-6. They go to 0-1 in district play. We'll be back with you tomorrow night, beginning at 5.50 for pregame coverage. 6 o'clock first pitch from Vanceburg as game number two will convene between the Rams and the Lions. And then they'll uh, get district play again next Monday and Tuesday and the following Monday and Tuesday as we play our six district games between the four teams in the 63rd with Russell and Greenup. And then uh, we'll shake everything out and see where it plays as district tournament time rolls up there in that third week of May. And then the end of the, we're back in the Memorial Day, day of uh, regional tournament again, which is nice. Uh, kind of spreads things out. So that'll be nice to get things back to normal from there. But uh, beautiful sunset happening here as you look at the beautiful clouds there over top of the high school and uh, the sun coming down. US 23 there, but a beautiful evening for baseball here in Ramland tonight as the Rams pick up the victory. My final score, 4-1. to one. Hat tip to our crew tonight, Travis Altworth, Felicia Collier. They'll be with me again tomorrow night up in Vanceburg. That's it for us. For everyone at the Coit Sports Network, Travis Altworth, Felicia Collier. I'm James Collier saying good night. We'll talk to you tomorrow night right here on Cool TV. Thank you for watching another Racial Rams baseball broadcast live on Cool TV. This broadcast of Race on Rams Baseball has been an exclusive sports presentation of the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV.